actually gives him a lot of, so he's, he's told us about 3D web world. Um, so, thank you. Good, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dmitry. I'm a Seneca graduate, and I worked also at CDOT, where I uh, worked on uh, several projects. And uh, all of them were related to 3D in the browser. So I thought that uh, I can share you a little bit uh, how it looks like, uh, how, it look, how 3D looks like in the browser. So today we will be talking about uh, like a brief history of 3D on the web. A uh, little bit I'll uh, show you how, how, how it works list in the code and uh, I'll also show you uh, some libraries available uh, to use and it's much easier uh, than uh, the basic way of using uh, 3D in the browser and I'll show you code comparisons to prove that it's much easier to do and the last thing will be uh, some examples how it looks like To start off, um, so the very first thing, uh, 3D in the browser, was a thing called VRML. Uh, I think it stands for Virtual Reality Model Language. Uh, it was the very first thing, and you needed to install a Java plugin for that, uh, and it had the limited um, capabilities. So it basically died. And then took over uh, Adobe Flash, which was uh, for uh, many years available. Uh, and uh, you could use it uh, to render 3D graphics in the browser. But we all know that was uh, resource consuming technology, also uh, vulnerable. and. Uh, you had to install, again, plugin in order to use it. So just recently died as well. So you might have heard of um, OpenGL. It's a uh, open source uh, uh, graphics library that is available for desktops, for various uh, operation systems. And this is a library that enables you to uh, make uh, graphics on your computer using your graphics card. But when uh, uh, st uh, st started uh, smartphone rise, they realized that they need uh, also to render graphics on mobile devices. But uh, OpenGL was too uh, sophisticated and uh, the hardware of mobile devices is not as fast and performant as on desktops. So they had to come up with a simpler version of OpenGL called OpenGL ES, which is, uh, stands for Embedded Systems. So this is a simpler version of uh, OpenGL. And this is what they use in, uh, on Apple devices, in iOS or Android uh, devices in order to run graphics. <clears throat> and uh, later on, um, Mozilla uh, realized that we also need to bring, uh, bring uh, graphics uh, support, 3D graphics support in the browser. And they uh, started to do a thing called WebGL, uh, which is essentially OpenGL ES, but for the browser. And uh, why um, OpenGL ES, not the OpenGL? Because browsers we still have on desktops and on mobile devices. We want to make sure that everything works everywhere exactly the same. So WebGL uh, became a library for a browser in order to uh, render 
3D graphics. It, it, I, it, it released in 2011, I have to say, but a stable version was released just 2013. So it's pretty new technology. Um, so WebGL uh, is a library that basically uh, consists of uh, two parts. The part that is uh, run on the graphics card, and there's language used for it called GLSL. It's like C style language. And another part is JavaScript that can talk to uh, uh, that portion on, on the GPU. So JavaScript enables you to connect your web page to your graphics card, basically. And as you can see, uh, WebGL is supported by all the browsers, started uh, these versions. It's, it's, it's pretty old screenshot, uh, so the versions have gone much uh, farther. But uh, IE, starting 11, supports it, and uh, all the major uh, uh, browsers, they all support it. So it works just right out of the box. You don't need to install anything. Before IE 11, no, no, it just IE 11 started uh, to support it. Not even fully, just partially, but it was already something. So minimum IE 11? Yes, it's minimum IE 11. Yeah, it supports, yeah, the new one, a, a, Edge, yeah. it's all supported. <coughs> it's just w what was before IE 11 uh, does not support it. Okay. So basically how, how it looks like. So the, uh, the idea of uh, WebGL is you to, for you to offload graphics computation to your graphics card. So you can release uh, some uh, uh, computation power on your CPU. So how it's done? <clears throat> Basically, a graphics card understand uh, a thing called shader. What shader is? It's essentially a, a program, just a piece of code, written in JLSL language, uh, which is which looks like C. Uh, but it has its own uh, uh, prototypes and uh, I mean data types and constructors like vector uh, for for example but it's a, a, a regular um, C style uh, procedural um, language and the idea is uh, that uh, you can have you must always have uh, two two uh, types of shaders one is called vertex shader, another one called fragment shader. Vertex shader is all the dots of the uh, figure that you uh, um, send to, uh, that you would like to draw. Those are vertices, this is where you send uh, to this portion. And fragment shader is basically how to color it, your uh, figure. This is goes to uh, the fragment shader. So imagine we just need to draw one picture one frame uh, and uh, in our code in JavaScript we basically uh, in, um, create, let's say we decide to create a simple triangle so in our code we just specify basically three dots right, I'll just draw here let's say we have this uh, triangle right, which will have coordinates zero zero so this will be one, zero, and this will be zero, one. So basically we pass these three coordinates to our vertex shader. And uh, it knows, okay, so I can draw a triangle out of these uh, three points. And basically all the, sorry. Oh, sorry, yes. Yeah. Or early. Put those coordinates as X and then it's Y. And X is one then. He's right. X is one square two. Yes. 
Uh, okay, at least you know, you know guys how it's right, right? Okay. Uh, uh, so it's, it's not, it doesn't really matter at this point. Uh, so you, you send these three points to your uh, vertex shader. And it knows, OK, I can uh, make a triangle out of it, which is basically a basic figure uh, that uh, makes all kind of uh, shapes you want. And uh, then it goes to the fragment shader and looks, OK, what color we can uh, apply, what color is specified for this uh, particular figure. And here, for example, just a green color. So it takes this triangle and pixel by pixel rasterize it and give it a um, uh, green color. Or for example, we could specify a uh, color for each vertice. So it will be interpolated evenly and you'll have smooth transitions of the colors. But this is how, basically how it works for um, just for uh, one frame, for one draw. Okay. Um. And so I, I have to uh, mention that uh, there is two parts, the portion that runs on a graphics card, and there is also a portion uh, that runs on CPU, which is JavaScript. And in JavaScript, you usually specify shapes and uh, how it wo uh, the animation, like whatever you want to do with it. So for example, this is, will be an example in GLSL, how to draw a cube. And as you can see here, we uh, give it um, coordinates for each face of the cube. So basically this x, y, z, z. So, and it, here's four dots, so it's basically just grabbing these uh, um, four dots and creates out of it two triangles. This is how we can make a cube. But the thing is, uh, you can see it, how, uh, how, much, uh, how many lines of code it requires just to draw a simple uh, cube. So here we specify vertices, and here we specify colors. Uh, but uh, so so you can see it's pretty. Uh, it can be pretty uh, challenging to write simple things. So people realize that, and uh, they thought we can probably make uh, life easier. So there is a, a lot of different graphics libraries came out, uh, written in JavaScript uh, to help you to abstract uh, this WebGL and just to put it in simple uh, functions. So probably the most uh, uh, known will be Unity, where they have their own uh, uh, plugin to export uh, graphics to the browser. And also Babylon.js, which is uh, uh, written by Microsoft, many other libraries. But the most popular is, uh, it's called 3GS. This is one that we, we, we are using, and this is, uh, this is the most popular library. Everybody is using it, like even Google or Microsoft for their demos, or like many companies used already. It started in 2010 by a Spanish guy called Ricardo Cabello. Uh, if you remember, I said that WebGL was uh, released in 2011, but this started 2010. Uh, this because you you were still able to uh, render graphics in the browser before WebGL, but you would use a, a thing called can Canvas uh, Render, which is entirely on CPU and can be really uh, heavy to uh, render, but still possible. But then when the WebGL was introduced, they picked up it very quickly and started to develop uh, things for WebGL as well. So it's a very, very popular uh, library, has big community support, I think over 600 contributors. Has many different extensions, you can plug things uh, such as VR helmets, uh, different controllers. 
supports many file formats, including all the uh, new ones and uh, all the industry uh, supports and uh, writes uh, um, plugins for, for this library as well. So uh, if, if we would start to use uh, this language, this is uh, how much it would take to, uh, to write simple cube in 3GS. Basically, you just uh, uh, specify the geometry. So here we choose box geometry. When we would like to create a shape, we need to create geometry. We need to create material for it and combine the two. This is how we get the figure. So the one line, uh, this where we specify geometry, we're saying that we want to have a cube 200 by 200 by 200. Then uh, the next line, we say, OK, uh, we would like to use this type of material, which is very basic material, has a red color. And then we combine the two simply to get this cube. And this is uh, just a couple seconds. So this is uh, how it looks like, simple example. Uh, much easier to get into. Actually, I start, when I started to use this library, I had no idea about WebGL, how to use it. But it let me just to, to develop 3D graphics in the browser without knowledge <laughs> of WebGL at all. And uh, to go further, I wanted to give just little bit of 3D basics. Uh, so in, in 3D graphics, they use Cartesian uh, coordinate system, which is uh, has three dimensions, uh, like x, y, and z. And I have to mention that um, basically uh, WebGL or Canvas, whatever you see in the browser, it's actually all 2D, and it's our job to make, make it 3D. It's kind of an uh, illusion or a perspective that we make so we can see things like, uh, like 3D. But, but the fact is, it's actually a 2D picture. So in order to make things 3D, they introduced the third uh, axis, um, for example, Z. In this particular picture, the uh, directions of axis not uh, uh, the most common way. Usually y is up. But anyways, there's three axes. Okay. So what do we need uh, in order to uh, create uh, some graphics in the browser? So first of all, it will be a scene where we have all the objects, where they're all located. So it's one line, you create scene. We have scene, now we can place there some uh, camera, because we actually need to see uh, what is going on in the scene, even though technically uh, we're supposed to see it without camera. But what, like what camera does, you can uh, constrain your viewport uh, so when you uh, instantiate camera, you, s you s specify the um, near plan, plane, uh, far plane, and uh, this is, will be uh, your uh, frustrum where you can see things. So even though your scene can be much, much bigger, you can constrain your camera to see just this particular part. And there's two types of uh, cameras available. Perspective camera, the traditional one, and the orthographic camera, which is more like for maps or strategy games, for example. Again, very easy to instantiate camera, just one line. Uh, then we need to add some objects uh, to our scene. Uh, so let's add a cube. Uh, first of all, we specify geometry. We would like to have a box, size one by one by one. Then we need to give it some look material. Here in this case, you can give it some color or you can add a texture to it. Very easy to do as well. Just one line where you specify path to your picture. And then you combine geometry and material 
And here we go, you have your cube. Three lines of code. And then also we, uh, we need to, to give some light to our scene. Like uh, we, we're trying to, in 3D graphic, we're trying to uh, mimic uh, reality. In, and in reality, at night, you can't really see objects, right? You need some light to see objects. Here's exactly the same story. All the materials, uh, they react on the light. So if there is no light, you won't see anything. And again, how you instantiate light, it's one line. Uh, and this is you just position it and add to the scene. So, so far, we were talking about basically about one a draw call or one frame. So we just uh, do some uh, draw picture once. But what if, you, what if you would like to animate your scene? So you want to see things rotating, maybe interact with it, how you, how you can do it. Basically, you just uh, draw this picture again and again and again. And the ideal uh, frame rate, if you draw it, was around uh, 60 times per second. This the smoothest picture you can get. Uh, but that, uh, and this is how it's done. You sh you just basically uh, make a recursive call of the your animate function. But um, our computer is very fast today, and if you just simply execute a, a recursive function, it will be uh, executed many many times per second, uh, like so, let's say thousands of times per second, and will be a, basically an overflow. It will be very. Uh, difficult to proceed for your computer. So uh, browsers, uh, developers, they came up with uh, API uh, uh, function called request animation frame, which basically controls the frame rate. And if your computer is a little bit too slow, it will drop the uh, frame rate. If it's fast, it will try to increase it, but uh, it, it, the uh, purpose of this function is to make sure that your yes, computer is not going crazy and uh, renders the graphic as smooth as possible. So it was really um, convenient uh, function uh, to use. And also another beauty of it, if you switch to another tab, everything, the graphic gets paused so it doesn't consume uh, your uh, battery or computation power. So this is how you uh, animate something. You just uh, recursively call animation function. And you in this uh, function, you can specify all the, uh, all the movements you would like. For example, uh, you, can, you would like to see your cube rotate. So you basically add all your animation here. And uh, another uh, essential thing for 3D graphics, not only in the browser, it's used in all 3D graphics, is basically how you can interact with it. Uh, because so far we just saw things, but we couldn't really touch it. So the way how you uh, can distinguish objects was a um, uh, developed technology called ray casting. It's a relatively simple. And uh, how it's done, basically uh, a ray shoots from certain point, point towards your objects. And if that ray intersects your object, the, the information gets returned about the, that object. So for example, you have your mouse, uh, you click in uh, on, on your cube behind the scenes. Uh, it, uh, it takes the point where you clicked and uh, shoots uh, a ray, um, let's say, into the center of the scene. If, if intersection happened, you get back uh, information about the object, then you can manipulate with it. It's, it's pretty simple and, and it enables you to uh, interact with objects. So talking uh, about all those previous things, uh, uh, this will be the result. So this is our scene. 
and uh, uh, we added camera so we can see just uh, ju this small portion of the scene. So we added our object and we added some light so you can see actually a shadow here. And I can um, animate it. Uh, this is done for, uh, by calling the recursively that animate uh, loop. And the last thing, the ray casting, this is how it works. So basically, you just, you can interact with these objects uh, because it was an intersection of the object was detected, and now we know uh, that we can interact with it. And uh, another thing that I wanted to show, as I mentioned, that uh, we don't really see objects uh, at night. So here's just the same story. If I turn off the light, oh, I'm sorry. I just jumped to the next page. So if we turn off the light, we can't see anything. Once we add light, you uh, see. So this is important thing to know because sometimes people, when they just start, they, uh, they uh, add objects to the scene, but they can't see anything and they panic. Where is it? Why can't it? So don't forget about light. Uh, so people done a lot, lot of cool stuff with, uh, with this team. And this is what I wanted to show you just quickly. It's a pretty long demo. But this is uh, coding in real time in virtual reality. Uh, so what was used, the uh, Oculus Rift helmet. And uh, Mozilla uh, 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 Firefox version of the browser that supports uh, VR and 3GS basically to build the scene. And what uh, what person's doing here, he, he writes 3GS code uh, to see things in, in, this, uh, in this scene, in this virtual reality. And uh, it looks really amazing. But the point is, uh, so um, it supports, uh, 3GS library supports so many things, uh, so you can easily hook up now any VR device and, and use it. Or different controllers such as leap motion, for example. And I'll just uh, fast forward a bit. Maybe it's even here. So this is how you can see he, he, the person writes code real time and he can see the result uh, real time as well. But this was easily done just in the browser. Okay, so um, I wanted to show you some examples how it was um, used for, uh, at, I worked at CDOT, and the last project uh, I worked on was a data visualization tool, and we used uh, 3GS to build it. Um, so this is a, a, a data visualization tool uh, where you can bring your own data set and uh, visualize it so it will make things more uh, look more appealing. So for example, we have a data set of um, earthquake happened over just two months around the world. And as you can see there's many, many earthquakes happening. Uh, or for example, uh, you can choose another template. It's, this is basically another example. Uh, we have uh, uh, some currencies over a period of time, and uh, you can compare them and see, uh, uh, do some analytics, basically. But so the, all the 3D graphics uh, was done using 3GS. And here you can also uh, upload your local files or 
you can provide Google spreadsheet or even use Box if you're Box user and uh, fetch stuff from there. So different ways to upload data and uh, visualize it. So this this is a project we worked one uh, worked on uh, at CDOT under uh, leadership of Katie, who's here. Uh, another example that I would like to show you. Just one moment. If I can get it. Sorry. Company called Virol is uh, this Canadian company. It was located in uh, Toronto. Now they got acquired by a company called Box, Silicon Valley company, and they all moved to uh, Silicon Valley. But it is a Canadian company, and they use 3GS to build their things as well. So this is a, a online um, editor, which basically. Uh, uh, allows you to do interactive uh, 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 3D presentations for different campaigns, for example. And uh, you can share it, you can collaborate with some other people, so uh, it's really a powerful tool, tool which is uh, available online. And it's, it, it was a use 3GS to build a, a such thing. Th these guys actually were all company were partners uh, uh, for the project the, for the previous project I just showed you for the visualization tool. And uh, the last one uh, project that I'd like to show, which also used 3GS, and it's also a Canadian company. And uh, the prototype was built at CDOT. So uh, this is really cool uh, 3D uh, online editor as well, but it's much more sophisticated than the previous one. Uh, here you can do basically whatever allows you to do desktop software. And you can export, uh, import uh, things. It's very cool and really sophisticated. Um, so th these are examples that I wanted to show you. There is many, many examples online, different games, presentations. Uh, people use it uh, for many, uh, many things. If you would like to see, uh, you go to the website 3gs.org. Uh, 3 you will be surprised how many great examples are there. And um, this is basically concludes my presentation. If you would like to see slides, they're available online. This is a relatively short link. You should be able to write it down. And if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. So would you leave Microsoft, Visual Studio, or any language, or PSP uh, don't have. Well, yeah, it's 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 like it's 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 a little bit different uh, thing. So I'm pretty sure you can integrate. Uh, all what you need basically is just a browser. Yeah. Uh, so it depends how your uh, project works. Uh, as long as you run things in the browser. Uh, you can use it. Well, in my understanding, uh, the, uh, what are you talking about? It serves uh, things from the server side, right? Uh, so you can use it, uh, you know, to serve even code for this thing. But so, but the endpoint it has to be run in the browser. N not quite yeah. sure how you can combine this thing, but I'm pretty sure. It should be not a problem because it's like two separated things, essentially.
kind of real transformation. Um, and I have another second question, but after that. Sure. Uh, so about those edges and things, uh, you can use anti-aliasing, so you can smooth uh, edges, uh, so it will be uh, costly for performance, but it will look nicer. Um, how you optimize things? Well, you try to put uh, as less as possible into your uh, animation loop, uh, because this is where it gets heavy when you put too much stuff to animate. Um, if you would like to really optimize things, 3GS supports uh, shaders. Th that's what I was talking about uh, in the start of the presentation. So shaders, since they're running on the graphics card, uh, your job is to put as much as you can to those shaders. Because imagine uh, we have uh, processors, two, four, eight cores, but graphics cards, uh, they actually have uh, thousands of cores, and uh, they can run those shaders simultaneously. So if you want to optimize things, uh, you just try to write your own shaders. But uh, 3GS constantly, like the guys who are developing things for 3GS, they're constantly working on optimizations, and uh, there have become many methods available um, to offload uh, computation to a graphics card without even knowing uh, WebGL. So two ways, you either learn GLSL and offload things to a shader, or you wait until methods will be developed how to do it easier. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So yeah, you just answered my second question. Ah, okay. Well, yeah, cool. cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Yes, please. Uh, there were so many lines of code, like scanning all the coordinates, and uh, that was deal like at the end of the presentation. So how much, uh, like, what was that? And uh, other, like, uh, any, like, drawing tools or something, like drawing line on the screen, something. And it, it kind of calculates uh, coordinates by itself. Is that better? Uh. Well, uh, so the, the uh, uh, like a rota rotation cube, the one that is uh, at the end, uh, not quite sure how many lines there, but let's say minimum 10 times less than if you would write it just yourself for WebGL. And uh, for, for example, to rotate cube in 3GS, you, you just in your animation loop specifying that it will be rotation around this axis and how much to rotate, it's one line. In WebGL, you will have to uh, write a formula that would calculate uh, uh, for each uh, vertex, uh, it will calculate the position uh, in, the, uh, in the air. So for each frame, all the, uh, all the points will be calculated frame by frame. Uh, so this is basically the difference. Uh, that you'll have to you'll have to do everything manually, and uh, put some formulas uh, in order just to simply rotate it. Whereas 3GS requires you one line. If I answer it, your uh, question. Still have like many points, many How do you do it? Oh, sorry. Can I say it again? Uh, oh, well, oh, I see, I see, uh, in the online editor, you mean. Uh, well, that, um, this is what the, the tool for online editor, it, uh, it allows you just to use a preset uh, figures, or you can even manipulate them, you can stretch them, uh, scale up, or add something to it, you can combine meshes, so you just do it like, uh, I don't know, like you're in Photoshop doing something, so it's much, e you don't have to write any code for that, you just use your mouse, you know, like, like you would draw something in a regular program. It's just online editor. So the, the, that deer was made in uh, either online editor or maybe desktop graphics editor, but it's, I'm, I'm, it's, it wasn't written uh, just in uh, points. It is complicated. Oh, yeah, it's very complicated. Right. 
you'll get lost. Uh, so even to draw a sphere, it's uh, initially it's pretty complicated. I'm not even talking about deers. But then there, there is, on the internet, there's so many models already built available for you. You just grab them, use, do out something out of it. Mm -hmm. So are there like any drawing tools? Unity, for example. Yes, yes, exactly. It's a very simple process. So, so you can go Clara.io and try it yourself. Just to create a cube, stretch out, make a sword out of it or something. It's very easy. Just check out Clara.io. Yeah. Oh, what do you think there's not so much Well, I, I think uh, it's getting there. Uh, you, you can see more and more. Uh, this is uh, because WebGL is pretty new thing. They just uh, was stable release 2013, and uh, this pretty much it. So the people were waiting to support of all the browsers. Uh, in iOS, they started to support from iOS 8, I think, and. Uh, so it happened uh, just basically one year, um, it, it, it became uh, popular. That's why it's not so uh, ubiquitous yet. But it is actually, if you would Google uh, apps uh, built using 3GS, there will be many and many of them. Sometimes it's just not obvious, but is people just even uh, put some little 3D things on their website just to make it look nice. That's it, there's no even purpose for it. So, so if you see something 3D, most likely it's done by 3GS. But yeah, it's, it, 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 uh, it's taken over. Uh, you will see more and more uh, uh, things uh, in, in, uh, in the browser, 3D. What about the response, like the browser response that being impacted by It depends. Uh, if you, for example, load in a model, that it will take time. It depends on the format. Right? If you build, uh, if you have uh, all your shapes uh, in the code, it will be much faster. Uh, if you even have uh, coordinates um, for your figure, it will be even faster. So it depends how it was written, and there's many examples in the internet. You, as you saw, there's sophisticated online editors. They run pretty smoothly in the browser. So it only depends how the code is written. There's not much troubles uh, with the performance. Is there any compression tools like for the 3D? There, there are some uh, formats uh, uh, available they are pretty uh, compressed. Like the new one uh, was just released uh, called GLTF. This is uh, uh, the next version. I mean, this is from the others of Kalada um, uh, format. Uh, but th this format uh, has uh, most of the uh, uh, model is in binary format. So it can be loaded to uh, faster to the system, and also uh, the hierarchy on uh, and all metadata is stored in JSON, which is also very fast uh, because it's native format for JavaScript. Whereas, for example, Kalada is used to uh, is a XML format, and parsing really takes time. So you, you just need to look into the formats, and the the most promising is the GLTF. 3GS supports it, all the uh, importers, exporters available. Uh, so it's, it's a really good format to use. <coughs> yes, please. Um, uh, so, where do you, how, so yeah, where do you think uh, 3D on the web is going to be in the future? Is it going to be everywhere? 
Well, absolutely. I think all the software is moving to the browser. As you can see, our applications getting more sophisticated, and there will be more and more use of 3D, special, especially, I think, in virtual reality. Um, there will be many things available through the browser. Just easier to deliver. The, the only problem is so far that um, uh, the code and the models, the weight, I mean, sorry, the size of it is too big. So you just have to wait until it's all loaded. But uh, there, there is also new formats get developed where they're essentially binary format, which can be loaded much faster to the system. So all the industry is moving uh, towards browser uh, browsers anyways, and 3D graphics it will be like a huge part of it, in my opinion. <laughs> Guys, any other questions? So how, how, how to debug it? Well, it, uh, it's, e it's easy to debug it uh, because 3GS is pure JavaScript uh, and they make so sure. Well, there, there are some tools available for, for Chrome browser to debug uh, uh, WebGL, particularly. If you want to go that deep, uh, you, can, you can debug even WebGL. But uh, the, the uh, 3GS guys, they're doing a good job making sure that you don't have to deal with it, so everything works as expected. So if you would like to debug something, you'll, pr you'll probably debug your own code in WebGL rather than uh, 3GS. Yes, uh, and, and it's pretty difficult to debug uh, <coughs> because um, this is not native uh, uh, format for a browser. It still gives you some uh, error messages, so you can see which line gives you troubles and even some hints, but it's not as uh, uh, powerful as uh, uh, Chrome uh, DevTools. But uh, I already saw some uh, shader debuggers that make things like, much easier to debug. So it's not a problem anymore. Oh, well, I'm, yes. I'm surely done, so thank you guys for uh, visiting me. Uh, I hope you learned something today. presenters with a small gift. So oh, sure. Thank you. I get to do that. Thank you very so, much. Uh,